Bruce Lawn. I, I do think that there's a part of it where people think that we're asking for people with, like when, when we're speaking against speaking out against racism, just we're asking people, hey man, give up all your wealth to us. That is not any, any nobody's saying that. Mm-hmm. We're just saying get out of our way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, let's that's talk really about that. Let's 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 talk, let's talk about that. <laughs> get, get, get out of our way. Um, when people think when when people think systemic racism or structural racism, they go to the most logical conclusion, which is, uh, 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 show me a racist laws on the books right now. You cannot show me a racially partial law that's on the books right now, right? That's that's the argument. And I think, well, crack the coke disparity. I think. Hey, there was open segregationist in the Senate until the year 2000. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, interracial marriage. My wife is black. Interracial marriage was illegal in Alabama until the year 2000. Yeah. The crack and coke disparity <laughs> didn't get changed to the year 2000. I would yeah. even say the way we fund public schools has a racial undertone where a third of the pro- uh, funding from public schools is from property taxes. So I think all of that. Um, I, th- I think of all of that, and I think, okay, that, that, that's fair. When you say get out of our way, and the way I've heard it defined recently is, is that there's different pathways, is that depending on which family you're born into, which you didn't choose, and depending on which neighborhood you go to at the public school, which you didn't choose, you're going to have a different pathway than somebody that isn't coming from the same uh, degrees of privilege, if you will. And I know that's a trigger word for people in here, and we're not going to say uh, yeah. blessing. Uh, that's a whole other <laughs> mis- misnomer of that. Right. But uh, a, 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 a different... Uh, uh, a privilege, and so there's different pathways, right? Um, can you unpack this idea of how has the sin of partiality impacted our structures and systems? And you can go back to, you know, uh, the Homestead Act and Black Wall Street or, or wherever, wherever you feel comfortable. Uh, I, I, I think of the war on drugs, for example, but I'd love to hear you define this idea of different pathways being impacted by partially sinful laws that helped certain people and hurt other people. Yeah, I mean, whether you're talking about Social Security, whether you're talking about education, I mean, wh- whether you're talking about um, black codes, where you're going back to, you know, there's so many, I mean, you, you mentioned a lot just now with, you know, the whole idea of redlining, you know, and, and looking at redlining in communities where blacks were redlined out of buying in particular areas of cities. That's documented facts. I mean, when you look at the fact that Black Wall Street had 23 churches in it and Mm. that helped develop the reason why Black Wall Street exists. And I found this out from a historian is is part of the reason that that thrived because there were 23 churches in that sector of uh, of the Greenwood section of Tulsa that were that those people, our people went to and they were empowered to start barbershops, to be teachers, to go to college, uh, to be entrepreneurs. So forth and so on. I mean, I can go on and on and on about that. I mean, when you look at is a um is is I forgot the name of the book. I'm, again, I'm not in my library, but there's a book about um something that happened in New York with uh Abyssinian Baptist Church. Um, basically, had uh you know they weren't allowing black people to get loans from the banks, and so Abyssinian Baptist Church and churches like Concord in 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 New York City had to start uh, uh banks and or a credit union in order to pool their money so that blacks could start buying uh, a property in Brooklyn to be able to buy homes in the city. I mean, you, you, you go there, you talk about the, the riots of Wilmington. Uh, you talk about the, you talk about the, the lynching in Springfield, Missouri. If you talk about the fact that, um, uh, 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 uh um, I'm, I'm there in Springfield, uh, uh, in Springfield, Illinois, rather, uh, there was a, a lynching that happened because of the jealousy of those whites there of that particular black person. They went to they, they lynched them on Saturday, came back after Easter service on Sunday and got pieces of their body and clothing as remnants to their commemoration of that particular thing. And twelve hundred uh, 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 well to do uh, working class black people had to leave that part of uh, 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 Illinois and go places. You talk about the idea of the riots in Oakland. The, the Chicago riots of 1919. You talk about the man. I can go, man. Look here, bro. This this has this has been um, a uh, a historic. There was a historic record where one and, and this and Ruzan, This is what it boils down to. Is that we have been poorly educated in America, mm. and what do I mean by that? When you go into your schools, and I heard, and you know, I had some kid. I had some of the youth from my church do a um. A panel a few Sunday before last, just them talking about how they felt about everything going on in the riots and, and not the riots, but just the racial climate and everything. And so one of the things, 
what well, several of the kids say they said in our history classes there was only like two pages or a paragraph on american slavery but there was a huge section on the revolution there was a huge section on mm -hmm. the emancipation there was a huge section on press and they said and, and, and they said you know when because of and, and it's a reflection of this the way we're educated in america is people think we're crazy when we bring up this history because we have a patriotistic way a patriotic way rather of painting history to people and so when people when christians bring up dark history to other christians about what america is like well let's leave the past alone and guess what i tell them with that well let's take all the historical theology classes out of our schools out of our seminaries let's 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 take let's stop looking at background information this is like the past when we do exegesis in the bible let's just burn all of our background commentaries and the original sources that they came from since we should forget about the past you know what i'm saying a jesus's yeah. crucifixion that was very very brutal let let's 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 get rid of transfixiation and talking about what happened to him actually on the cross and so why do i say that it's because people want to people there's a guilt uh, that's this the centered around something that may point the finger at something that we need to systemically change, man. And, you know, I think Dr. Eric Mason, I'm Armenian. I don't know if you know that. Uh, and we just had the Armenian genocide of 1915 recognized, uh, by the Biden administration. And, um, and that, and that was a, that was a, 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 a win for the Armenian community. And yeah. one, of, one of the things that, uh, Armenians don't want to hear about is we don't want to hear about the genocide or lack of genocide from the Turks. Right, right, right. <laughs> we, right. Let us let us share our own history with you, and uh, and don't be upset. Uh, don't be upset because we feel like, oh, finally, this has been recognized as a genocide, the very genocide that went on to inspire Hitler's genocide against the Jews. Um, right. And 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 anytime I make a video about it, I just turn the comments off because sure enough, I'm going to get a bunch of really triggered and angry um, of, you know, Turkish folks in there and RZ folks in there that are just going to be upset. And so I right. think it's always really interesting that um, our, when, when Armenians talk about this, usually people are okay them talking about this or them demanding justice or them marching for this specific wrong that was done but when right. when, when it's when it's black folks talking about it it's like <laughs> well can we just move on can we just not talk right. about it well why do we why right. do we got to keep harping and and what folks don't understand is hey there were actual injustices that happened that impacted people's todays that, right. that directly impacted people's todays. Um, in, in my experience, and I don't, and I'm not using generalities here. So, guys, those of you guys in the chat, don't get, don't get triggered. My experience, all of my white friends, and by my, all my white friends, I got about four white couples that I'm close with. Uh, when, yeah. when they went to purchase homes, their parents were able to afford getting them down payments for homes or full on passing properties mm -hmm. down to them. Like here, here mm -hmm. is a $700,000 mm -hmm. home in San Diego. It's yours. Or, hey, wow. here's $100,000 to put down on, on your home. Here, you have it, right? And then when I looked around, a lot of my black friends, or specifically my wife's family, who were hit hard by the war on drugs, being in California, uh, yeah. the, the CIA kind of being complicit in the whole cheap cocaine, the fun of legal, legal wars. You guys could do the Googles for yourself. Um, you saw not just redlining, but then you saw what happened in the 70s and 80s with the war on drugs. Yeah. Devastate the black community. And then you don't see the same thing where properties are just being passed down, where you have folks just, you know, hey, here's a hundred thousand dollars to right. And so the the, right. the 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 dismissal always goes back to ah, it was just a welfare state created by the Democrats. That's why it was bad. And they gloss over the just the complete awfulness, I don't even know another word, of the war on drugs and how devastating it was um for the black community. Can you can you unpack that a little bit in terms of this is recent history. This is within the last yeah, 30, yeah. 30, 40 years that I, my father in law was in and out of jail over petty drug crimes. He wasn't no big cartel moving right. weight, you know, uh, out here like Freeway Ricky Ross. He was he's just in and out of that revolving door for yeah. 20 years of his life, 30 years of his life. Yeah, so it's interesting, man. So. When you look at the whole war on drugs, I grew up during that. That was my day. I was born in 1973. So I was in my teens in the 80s. And, you know, we had, and this is where the church, this is a huge gap that challenged a challenge to black dignity. They weren't, at the church at large, wasn't, they, they were just making statements about, 
man, why is the black community this? Why is the black community that? And why is most of the crime happening in the black community? So if you take any people group, you put them in the same area that 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 all of all of those people that live in inner cities, those inner cities started during the Great Migration during the 40s, the 30s and the 40s. Right. Those people migrated in the 50s. They were kept out of jobs, that type of thing. They were put in redlined in the particular communities that were concentrated in cities. So if you're talking about New York, if you're talking about L.A., if you're talking about Washington, D.C., where I'm from, if you, you know, if you're talking about Wilmington, Delaware, if you're talking about Trent, New Jersey, if you're talking about Camden, New Jersey, if you're talking about the boroughs of New York, if you're talking about Boston, you know, there's not there's a reason why all the black people live in Jamaica Plain. There's there's mm-hmm. a reason there's a reason why uh, a certain parts of the Bronx are the way down. There's a reason why Harlem exists. There's a reason why East New York exists. There's a reason why Southeast DC exists. There's a there's a reason why around Black uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard in every city is black people in 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 poverty. There's a reason for that. And so when you when you when you look at um 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 that era during the crack era, you know you had people like Farrakhan speaking on saying black people don't own planes. Black people don't own boats. Mm. Black people don't manufacture guns. So if black people don't have the economics to get any of that, who and how is that particularly happening? And then that's why the whole scam it's it's like an open secret that 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 it was a manipulation manipulative tactic. If you put people who are dead in sin in their iniquities and you throw them in the same place and you starve them of food. You affect their educational system. Not, not that it's their fault. It's not, not all their fault. There's human responsibility that comes with all of our personal sin. But there is a system that's in, that was involved with that. Uh, uh, and when you when you put that there, and then drop when you drop drugs in the middle of that community, and people don't have the ability to have jobs, we we in theology have something called a functional savior. What is a functional savior? When Jesus isn't, when you're not allowing Jesus to be your savior and you find another outlet or mechanism for your salvation, for you to feel a sense of freedom from a circumstance that you're in, you, you grab it. So they grab drug, they grab the drug or they start selling drugs or they grab liquor or they, all of these different things. And that's concentrated in that area. You t- like right now, let's drop a hundred people into a particular context where we starve them of most of everything and watch the walls of depravity fall down within that particular milieu or context. And so when we see the effects of that, and then after the after that season is over where everybody's killed each other or people are in jail or locked up and the community property value begins to go down, then the developers become reinterested in that particular area and they come get it at bottom dollar, mm. uh, uh, buy it, buy it or even if a black person does there are black people that have handed down their homes in those particular areas but over the years that person working and slaving whether it's in a factory or wherever they work and then they get older and their retirement isn't robust and the cost to get a roof went from five hundred dollars to twenty thousand dollars so guess what they're going to do the house is either going to go down or someone's going to swoop in and buy the house from them once they swoop in and buy the house from them, they buy it way less than property value because the house is in shambles and the overall property value is down. When that developer buys it in Philadelphia during that particular time, there was zero taxes for 10 years on anyone who built out and developed certain level of homes. So now you got tax abatement. Now you got now you're buying at the bottom dollar. Like, like even where New York is now with these houses being 2.5 million, those people were buying those houses back in the day for six thousand dollars. And yep. they had can, can you imagine that house staying in your generate in your family? generation for three generations and you come up everybody's dead but you you're a single young professional you got your education and you're left a 2.5 million dollar home and you're able to sell it or you're an older person you say i want to retire it's it's cheaper down in the south i can go down into a into a into a community so listen i got a decent amount of of this i was a cab driver all my life now i'm selling my brown stuff for 2.5 million dollars i'm moving down to i'm moving down to florida and guess what i'm gonna do in florida um I, I am I'm, I'm going to buy a house for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and live the next twenty five years off of the quarter of a million dollars that I just was able to take out of the equity out of the house that I just sold. In other words, listen, man, this is more like and, and listen, Ruslan, to do that type of homework. I think some people will have a nervous breakdown and a heart attack <laughs> and a stroke hearing how bad Negroes have had it in our country. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. If you look at it, listen, if you look at scripture and you look at when people were in pandemics or epidemics, God even, let's talk about even the curses of Deuteronomy, right? Um, but, uh, you know, when Israel got plundered, 
crime went up in Israel. That's why I said mothers will eat babies. Why? Nobody would want to eat their baby. But when you are when you are closed in and the walls of mess come in so deeply on you, you would do desperate measures just for survival. And that's even in the Bible. But thank God Almighty that the restrainer restrains and the restrainer doesn't let our depravity fully unveiled itself because we would destroy each other and it would be a, a horrible, horrible world, man. So anyway. So what I, I hear you going, saying man. is what I hear you saying is one, <laughs> these these things didn't happen in a vacuum. They didn't happen no. overnight. No. And that it's it's compounded over generations to where we have that the average black family and the you know the, the, the average white family is 10x the net worth of an average black family in America. Right. That, that this stuff um isn't just something that's happened overnight. This 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 took time. And how intentional or deliberate this was by people in power or how complicit they were or how much they took their hand off of it, we that, that could be debated, right? That we don't know yeah. how much of this stuff was like, yeah, we wanna intentionally put crack in the hood to kill black people versus ah, we just put crack in the in the hood. Who cares if it kills poor people and black people, right? We 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 can't we can't we can't get to that, but we can get to some of these racist tapes with Reagan and Nixon talking crazy about black people, which came out uh, and, and and that was you know kind of brushed under the news. So um, I, I hear what you're saying. Kingstream Entertainment, Bruce Lawn. Joshua the King came down and bore it all. Yeah. Conversations in front of the fireplace All of my mistakes out of wire race Wanna operate at a higher pace Birth pains causing the body to dilate On a first name basis with the word